When we look at the, the role of government and their role in setting policies that are going to allow entrepreneurship to thrive, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen uh, from these governments in, in setting policy? Well, there are a number of mistakes that I think that uh, policymakers make. And by the way, it's, it's sometimes government, it's sometimes government-related institutions. So it's not only elected and non-elected government officials. Um, but one of the mistakes that I think is fairly ubiquitous is the lumping together of self-employment with high-growth entrepreneurship. And that leads to confusion because they're very different, although they may have this commonality of self-employment, the commonality ends there, and they're really very different in terms of mindset and ambition, and they're also very different in terms of impact on the overall society. We know that the job creation comes from the high-growth, ambitious, and somewhat risky sometimes, ventures. Those are the ones that generate the value, generate the employment, etc. So those the self-employment is very important, uh, for example, for alleviating poverty in certain environments. Uh, so even they can be separated into, for example, the uh, Ministry of Health and Labor uh, and Welfare for and the Ministry of Economic Development. They belong in different places, but oftentimes, in fact, almost always they're lumped together. So that's one of the uh, mistakes. The second mistake, which is related, um, is, is not setting clear objectives in terms of how much entrepreneurship are we trying to create. Should everybody be a high growth entrepreneur? Well, we know that that's impossible because high growth entrepreneurs, they require other people to work for them. So everybody can't be. So how much is enough? We know that when uh, society starts to have successful entrepreneurs, that success breeds success. Successful examples, such as the Skypes of the world, um, stimulate other people to want to be and to try to be entrepreneurs and also brings in capital and other resources. So we know that success breeds success. There's a positive a virtuous cycle. So the second mistake that that policymakers make is not saying, oh, what is our target? How much are we actually trying to, to foster, to generate, and at what point will it become somewhat self-sustaining? So that's a second mistake. A third mistake, which is also fairly, um, fairly ubiquitous, is the, tend to think, the tendency to think fairly piecemeal about specific programs. It's almost the, uh, like fads. So today, for example, incubators are, are, are considered to be good things, or angel networks are considered to be good things, and they're almost fads in certain, in certain environments. Clusters, um, and now crowdfunding. And these things can work, but they work only when there's other things happening at the same time. And there's a tendency to think if we have an incubator or if we have an accelerator or an innovation center, therefore entrepreneurship will follow naturally. Or if we have a cluster, that, uh, that entrepreneurship will follow naturally. But we know that that doesn't work. We know that these things, in fact, are oftentimes caused by successful entrepreneurs. Angel investing, the history of angel investing in the United States is that it's the result of successful entrepreneurship. It's also the cause. So again, it's, it's a, a virtuous cycle, but you can't have the angel networks, the angel investing without the successful entrepreneurship, the availability of capital, education, and other kinds of resources. So it's very important to think holistically um, and, cr and not think piecemeal in, in sort of slogans or fads, because these things we know are going to lead to, to failure, uh, ultimately.